about the far clip option within our camera and we'll also clean up some geometry within our view. Now the great thing about working in this view is anything I change in one view is automatically going to update what's happening in this view. And that works great, uh, especially when we're creating views such as the one we created here and we see how this is looking in a perspective view or in a view that we're going to use as a presentation and I have an idea of things that I need to either get rid of or make adjustments to. In our case, what we need to get rid of is the basically the uh, lock plan that we have brought in here the CAD reference file but I also want to make some adjustments to the site so that it looks good in here as well and let's go ahead and talk about that far clip as well so what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and select my view and the reason why I'm going to do that and highlight this view is because when I select my 3D view I can go to a floor plan view and it's going to activate my camera had I not selected that view and jumped to a 3D view I would not have this camera active. So that's a quick, easy way to make sure you can see what's going on with your camera. Now, because we have our camera selected, we have the properties of this view visible for us, right? So I can come down here and talk about this far clip offset. Now, we talked a little bit about this before. So let's kind of elaborate on it. I want to give you a better understanding of how it works. We set up our camera, and basically we're brought up with this nice triangle here. So everything that's included inside of this triangle is going to be visible within our view. Now, had we set up this view and maybe a portion of this model were outside of this triangle, that portion would not be visible in our 3D view. So that's where these extents or these boundaries come in handy. Now, our far clip offset is basically this line here, and we can adjust it by clicking and dragging with this grip or typing in a value here. Now, the benefit of this far clip offset, we really see it. Uh, two times. One, when you're setting up a view and things are visible and you can see all the things you want and it adds those details. But anything that's in this area, including these boundaries and your far clip, are going to be rendered once you render your image. And that can dramatically affect render time. So let's say we had a gigantic project here, right? And we had a bunch of buildings on this lot plan and we wanted to get a view. So anything that was included in this camera view here is actually going to get rendered. And that can really, really affect your render time. So if you want to minimize your render time, you want to be efficient about what you're rendering, but you also want to have enough detail, pay close attention to your far clip and what's inside this view area of your model. Now, understanding far clip, right? So we can actually turn this on and off. So I can say... In my properties here, in my view, I can say far clip active. And if I deselect this and click apply, you can see it disappears. Now what happens is if I were to render this view, it would render every single thing that it can see on to the end of this project, which can really, really eat up your uh, rendering time if it's a giant project with elements that exist out here. So this basically creates a nice constraint and it makes forces this view to only focus on the elements that are within our little triangle. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that and you can see it'll bring it back. I can manually type in a distance I want it to. So let's say we wanted to say we need this to be 500 feet. I can say 500 feet apply and it'll automatically adjust that as well. Now and that will take care of the placement and that distance is basically from this corner all the way on over to here. All right, so I think that's a pretty healthy explanation of how the far clip works and the importance of it. So now what I want to do is I want to jump to our 3D view and I want to go on ahead and get things a little better. But for that, let's go to site. Actually, we'll go back to a 3D view and take a look at some things we can make adjustments to. So I'm going to go to my 3D perspective. So the two things I want to make adjustments to are I want to get rid of the topo or the lot plan that we're using as a reference. We really don't need that anymore. And then I want to make adjustments to my actual topo lines that are or my topo surface so that the surface actually populates this entire portion of my view. So I'm going to go ahead and jump to maybe a site plan view. And now that we don't need that reference anymore, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. So we won't need this sun path. I'm going to cut that off. I want to get rid of this. So I'm not going to hide it in the view, but I'm actually going to delete it. So I'm going to select it and red X will get rid of it. So if I jump back down to our perspective, you can see that's cleaned out. Now let's go ahead and adjust our topo while we're here as well. So I'm going to go back to site and let's adjust our topo. And I'm going to adjust this. Oh, basically bring these boundaries out to where they extend, expand back out past that way. So I'm going to grab 
I'm going to highlight over and I'm going to do a tab select. I'm going to go ahead and edit the surface. And I'm just going to drag these points out. Right to where I can, so they're going to be much more visible within my project. I'm going to go ahead and drag these out as well. And I'm going to keep it pretty simple. Really, all I need for this is really four points. There's no need to complicate this more than it needs to be. So any other points that I don't need, I'm just going to simply select them, do filter. I want to keep my boundary, but I want to go ahead and keep those points selected. And let's get rid of them. I can do it individually if I wanted to. All right, so that takes care of it. So once we hit this green check mark, it's going to automatically adjust, make that adjustment for me. I'm going to keep this in there so I have a nice reference for when we start placing trees because I may want to follow this as my trees. So now I can jump to our 3D view perspective, and this should look a lot better, and it does. All right, and again, our model lines are going to be visible. We can get rid of those a little bit later as we begin dressing up this site. But now we have clean view. We have a better understanding of the far clip offset. And we went ahead and made some adjustments to our topo.